Welcome back to Overthinking Tech. I am very excited because this just arrived in the mail. So full disclaimer, uh, I didn't pay for this. Uh, Intel sent this to me for free as part of a research program that they have. So I'm gonna be taking a look at this. Obviously, I'm gonna have to try it for gaming. But I'm not going to publish any gaming reviews. Go check, like, Hardware Unboxed or Gamers Nexus or something for those. What I am going to be showing you is how this does compared to some NVIDIA cards I have for AI. Now, I'm going to specifically look at an AI model that is representative of my research. Uh, a while back, I put together a Python script for demo purposes. And one thing that's really nice about that is it lets me completely at will change the size of the neural network. I can make it bigger, smaller, whatever I want. And we'll get to see how this stacks up in artificial neural network performance compared to some of those NVIDIA options, which will be very very exciting and something that i don't think i've seen anybody really properly do okay so now the answer to the question of how are intel arc gpus and before i get into that i have to mention one thing that could be kind of a deal breaker for a lot of people it honestly makes it difficult for me to roll this out in production the Arc GPU requires Windows. I read through all of Intel's documentation. I will link to the documentation I follow to get it up and running. It recommends using Windows subsystem for Linux. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. I'll just use Linux. And that doesn't work. In Windows subsystem for Linux, it recommends using Ubuntu uh, 20.04. I am actually using 22.04. Looks like both of those are fine in WSL, but trying to simply install uh, Ubuntu 2004 wouldn't work at all. Uh, Ubuntu 2004 Server Edition just gave me segmentation faults that I couldn't resolve. Ubuntu 22.04 uh, did install just fine and seemed to be working, but I couldn't get GPU acceleration working with TensorFlow. TensorFlow simply wouldn't see the GPU. This seems to be a limitation on how the GPU drivers are currently implemented in exposing the GPU to TensorFlow. We'll see this in just a moment here because what TensorFlow seems to see is kind of weird. It doesn't seem to see the GPU the way I'd expect it to, even though it, it functions. It, the GPU is definitely doing compute work. So what I have here for a setup is on the left, we have Windows subsystem for Linux running Ubuntu 22.04. This has been fully configured to work with the Intel A770. I have all the newest drivers as of March 10th when I'm recording this. I have below that the system performance where we can see that A770. Uh, the most important things here is we'll see dedicated GPU memory usage and this compute window will also show us that the card is actually working. On the right hand side, I have a Ubuntu server 22.04 system, just a standard Ubuntu 22.04 server install. I'm SSH'd into it, and below that I'm running uh, Watch NVIDIA SMI. So we can see that system has an RTX 3060. This feels like the most apples to apples GPU comparison we can do. Uh, an RTX 3060 is about the same price class as an A770, and given that it has 12 gigs of VRAM, if we go down to the 3050, we end up with eight. If we go up to the 3060 Ti, we weirdly also end up with eight gigs of VRAM. So the 3060 12 gig feels like the most prudent comparison for the A770. Now I have a Python script put together here. Uh, this is based on my actual research. So I'm not gonna share all of what the script does. 
What's important for this example is that I can arbitrarily change the size of the neural network. Uh, to run this, I'm simply going to do Python 3, and then I have a couple versions of this file here. So I have a large, a medium, and a small. There is some CPU overhead, but the CPU overhead is identical between the large, medium, and small versions of this file. The only thing that is changing is how big the neural network is. So what this lets me do is effectively choose how much load I want to put on that GPU. So I'm going to start by queuing up the small one here. And uh, we'll see a couple of things. Uh, we'll see these nice wave images. This is actually uh, what the input data for this neural net is. I generated this script as an example for some other stuff. So there's a few outputs that aren't required. I'm also going to spin that up on the system with a 3060. We can see that appear down here in the Python tasks. We'll also see VRAM fill up on the A770 system. First thing you'll notice is we already got to the training step with the 3060 as well as a follow-up data processing step that happens after. We're still waiting on the A770 system. Not sure what's going on with this. This does give us an opportunity to see a little bit of the weirdness with how the GPU shows up. You can see here it shows up with XPU0 with zero megabytes of memory. We see the compute resource being utilized here. We can see our 28 milliseconds per step. That's quite a bit longer than our nine milliseconds per step that we're seeing with the RTX 3060. And then once again, we see this pause before we can do that data processing. So for small networks, there seems to be a lot of additional overhead to using the GPU in this manner. I don't know if that's just because we're using Windows subsystem for Linux as opposed to running this just in Ubuntu server, but whatever the reason is, given that this is the only way you can run this GPU, it's something to note. Now I'm going to queue up the larger net here and we're going to see something interesting once it finally starts. And I'll do the same thing over here on the RTX 3060 system. Once again, the RTX 3060 system is going to get started a lot sooner here. Uh, we'll see that process appear. We'll see a very fast training period. Only 10 milliseconds per step. So we've only increased the time per step by about one millisecond. Uh, the net there is 10 times larger than the previous one. The reason there's such a small difference, even though the net is 10 times bigger going from the small to medium file, uh, is because this is where we are seeing our CPU bottleneck. And we're really going to see that with the Intel system as well. We're not hitting its maximum compute load here. And while it's slower than the 3060, it's 28 milliseconds per step is the same as what we saw last time around. Same pause again. While we're at this, I'm going to queue up the large net for the RTX 3060. Note, we're seeing the same 11 gigabytes of VRAM usage just across the board with the 3060. With the A770, we don't seem to be seeing anywhere near 11. We're, we're looking at a much smaller fraction of VRAM being used, about 4.4. Obviously, looking at the 3060 system, we've passed into a much slower training time. Uh, this net is five times larger than the previous medium-sized net. Oh, wait, hang on. Is that five times? 
That might actually be an exponential thing. So it might not have been 10 and 5. It might have been like 125. But we are moving past that regime of a CPU bottleneck for this neural net workload. And we're seeing these times of about 88 milliseconds per epoch or per step, 52 seconds per epoch. What's interesting here is that A770 is going to close the gap. So now we're looking at 88 milliseconds per step versus 110 milliseconds per step. While the A770 is slower in this case, that is a lot closer than those earlier tests we saw. Uh, by comparison, we were seeing stuff like 10 milliseconds versus 28 milliseconds, a 2.8 times decrease. Now we're down to like a 15% decrease. Okay, so I was curious about that sort of closing gap that we're seeing between the A770 and the 3060 when we looked at that larger net. So I actually went ahead uh, and I made two more versions of this. I'm gonna start with the extra large version. Uh, this just goes ahead and increases the size even from the large version that we were looking at previously. I'm curious to see if that gap between performance continues to close. Hmm. Interesting. So we might have hit the limit of the A770 here. We're seeing that 99 to 100% use of its compute resources. Definitely seeing that temperature increase. But that ETA compared to the 3060. So what's the conclusion? Should you buy an A770 as a workstation GPU for TensorFlow? The answer is, unfortunately, maybe. Uh, the gray answer that people don't like. This is a very, very impressive card. Truly. This is competing with NVIDIA's third generation Tensor Cores. If we were to go back to an older NVIDIA GPU, something with first gen or second gen Tensor Cores, I think this would win. So for Intel's first card out of the gates. This is very impressive. Here's the deal though. VRAM is important for AI acceleration. I said earlier in the video that one of the reasons I picked the 3060 is because with 12 gigs of VRAM, it makes more sense than the card below it or the card above it, because it actually has more VRAM. And this guy has 16. But not all A770s have 16 gigs of VRAM. Only the limited edition ones direct from Intel have 16 gigs. If you're looking at GPUs and you're comparing an 8 gig variant versus, say, the 3060, get the 3060. Get the card with more VRAM. Also, it performs better. But if you're looking at the 16 gig variant versus the 3060, Depending on your workload, if you are going to benefit from that extra VRAM, this could be the better option. With all of that in mind, I also can't predict the future here. And part of me wants to bet on the A770 getting better. The 3060 won't. The 3060 already has everything going for it. It's got the driver support. It's got all of that. The A770, though, currently only runs in Windows Subsystem for Linux. I'm guessing eventually they'll get that figured out. Chances are they're not going to ship server GPUs and then tell everybody, oh yeah, run Windows Subsystem for Linux instead of Red Hat OS like you've been running. I'm guessing they'll get driver support figured out. And if you know a way to get this running in Linux that I missed when trying to follow the documentation, let me know in the comments. Uh, if there's anything else you want to see me try to run on this, also let me know that in the comments below. Uh, and I'll do my best to try to get some results for that stuff. But as for a recommendation as a workstation GPU, if you're running Windows, 
and your workflow is TensorFlow acceleration. This could definitely be a good option. It's a lot cheaper than an A2000. It's going to be comparable, chances are, to a 3060 unless something in the market changes in the future that I don't know about. You could definitely do a lot worse than this. I, in general, don't think you're going to be disappointed. Compared to having no GPU, it is a heck of a lot better. Compared to other things at this price class, it is neck and neck. It is very competitive. And if it keeps getting better with driver updates and drivers for more operating systems and all of those things, the Intel A series could age like fine wine. I would expect that the 3060 is going to stay exactly the same as it is. So would I recommend this? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to give this a recommendation, maybe just because I want somebody else to compete with NVIDIA in this space. And for a first attempt, this is about the most impressive first attempt you could have ever asked for. Very well done.